What's up folks, Mike here at Welling Watches. Welcome to the video and in today's video we're going to be taking a quick look at the Hamilton Khaki King automatic wristwatch uh, from the Hamilton brand. Now those of you that are familiar with the Hamilton brand uh, will probably also know that they do quite a range of uh, car key watches. They do the aviation field and I think they might even do some navy ones. But the watch we're looking at today is the, uh, the car key king. Uh, which is the day date uh, automatic wristwatch and the reason I'm doing this video is because I think that this specific model is probably one of the best value watches out there uh, that you can get within the price bracket uh, that it falls into. So without further ado we're going to take uh, a look at the watch itself in a moment. Now this is the inner box which actually holds uh, the watch itself and this comes in a slightly larger uh, cardboard box with a manual and, uh, and a warranty card. Pretty boring stuff so we're not going to look at that. The box is quite nice quality, it's, um, it's like a cardboard, uh, nicely finished cardboard box uh, with a hinge and um, yeah nothing too fancy. This isn't a high-end watch so it's not going to have a high-end box. That rhymed, I should be a poet perhaps. Uh, so the watch is in there on its case cushion and in the top of the box it says uh, Hamilton. So there we go, nothing too fancy. So the model that we're looking at today is uh, the model that I would say is probably the best model to go for, uh, which is the bracelet version, the bracelet variant. See if we can zoom in and get a slightly better look at the watch itself. I think the, uh, the model number for this watch is uh, H6445133. But I'll put all the information below in the, uh, in the description. So if you wanted to look up this watch and, and find out for yourself, then you can do that. So there are many boxes that this kind of watch ticks and why I, I think this is probably one of the best value uh, watches you can get. Uh, I'm gonna go over each point individually uh, in this video. Now I go for the bracelet version of almost any watch that I like and there's a good reason for that. Uh, I love bracelet watches. So uh, I do enjoy bracelets. I find bracelets the most comfortable uh, strap on any watch. But also there's another good reason. If you buy the bracelet variant of any watch, um, you can take the bracelet off at any time and you can fit any strap you like later on down the line, whether it be leather, nylon, canvas, rubber, it doesn't matter. You can take the bracelet off, you can put on your own preference of, uh, of, of, of strap. And then if you get bored of those straps or those straps break, you'll always have the bracelet to go back to, uh, which is always more hard wearing and durable. Um, and the other reason is if you buy uh, a watch that has a leather strap, instead of the bracelet version and you want to buy the bracelet later on sometimes it can be quite hard to get hold of uh, the bracelet for that specific model or the pricing of the bracelet on its own uh, doesn't make it worthwhile doing so i always go for the bracelet version first but that's just my preference uh, and my um, my input so this is the bracelet version and uh, the bracelet is very nice and we're going to touch on that uh, in a second so the first thing to cover is uh, the glass on this watch. The uh, the front and I believe the uh, the back glass, because it has a uh, windowed case back, is a sapphire glass, uh, which ticks uh, an, the first box at least. Sapphire glass is harder than mineral and it's certainly harder than acrylic. And so in this kind of a watch, uh, you want a sapphire glass because it's gonna resist um, knocks and scratches, which are inevitable uh, in, in wearing any kind of watch. Um, so the sapphire glass is really nice. The only thing that really lets it down is the fact that it is not an AR coated sapphire. It is just a plain uh, straight sapphire glass. So this is um, slightly domed and being non AR coated, it does pick up reflections from absolutely every light source. So if I turn it over that way, the window's giving it reflections. So that is kind of a down point in terms of its legibility, um, but it is, at least a step up from having just a mineral glass uh, on its own. So the sapphire glass is uh, is really nice. And I'm pretty sure the uh, the case back glass, which you might be able to see there, is also uh, sapphire as well. So in terms of size, let's uh, get the vernier out, zero that out and see how large this watch is. So we're going from the side to the crown. We've got 43.6 millimeters. So it's not too large, it's not too small. Uh, it's certainly not a massive wristwatch. I have um, I have a few watches and they are quite large. And in comparison, this isn't. This is just the right size for most people. So on the face of it, 
if we look at the face itself, we have a uh, black dial, and on the outside we have the uh, the white Arabic numerals, and then on the slightly raised inner dial we have the 24 hour Arabic numerals. So for those of you that like 24 hour time, this watch covers both the 12 hour dial and the 24 in one. The uh, the numbers around uh, the outside are on um, their own little ring of sorts. So it separates the, the inner dial from the outer dial, which is quite nice. And uh, at the 12 o'clock position, we have uh, the day and the date. So it's really quick and easy to read. You can just look at the watch and you can see the day and the date. Now, the day and the date is a great feature on a watch. So this watch covers pretty much most of the boxes you're going to tick. So it's automatic, it's hand winding. I think it's also hacking as well. It has the day, it has the date. There's not much more that you need. It does what it's supposed to do. And the great thing about this particular model is um, you can wear it for dressy occasions as well as having it as a as a tool watch, which is what it was intended for. So with this polished uh, bezel and the polished crown, this adds just a little bit of uh, dressiness to it. So you can wear it on special occasions and then go back to work the next day and wear it at work. So it, it's it fits both purposes. It's not an all out dress watch and it's not an all out tool watch. So it's not a G-Shock and it's not a Patek. It's somewhere in the middle, which I think uh, is great. So like I say, the bezel is uh, polished as is the crown and uh, the rest of the casing is uh, is a very nice uh, brush finish and it's been very well brush finished as well. So it's a very nice quality. We've got a radial brush around the outside of the top and then we've got some straight brushing on the um, on the profiles of the case which is uh, which is quite nice so on the case back itself is uh, is also I don't know if you're gonna really see it in there uh, the case back is also windowed so you can see the, uh, the automatic movement and we're gonna touch on the movement uh, in a bit so it's nice to have uh, a case back the movement's well finished, it's not highly decorated, but it is um, it is a well finished movement with a nice rotor. I'll try and add some still photos of the movement during the video so you get a better look. Because it's kind of hard to do uh, with this camera setup. So next we're going to take a look at uh, the bracelet. Now the bracelet is, uh, is very nice, it's very well finished. Um, it comes with solid end links, which is nice. They're not folded metal. They are solid end links and there's some nice chunky uh, spring bars in there. So the bracelet is going to be on there very secure. We do have a signed clasp. As you can see, it says Hamilton there. And there's uh, two push buttons there to release the clasp. And there's no folded clasp here. It is a uh, machined clasp. Very well finished, very nice and uh, it's nice to have a good quality uh, clasp uh, on a watch. If you've uh, seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I, uh, I used to own a uh, Seiko Sea Urchin and uh, on the bracelet on that watch, the bracelet was quite nice, but the clasp uh, was folded metal. Now, admittedly, that is in a different price range to this watch, uh, but having a nice machine clasp like this, it gives you a good quality feel and it's, uh, it's very nice. And there's a nice click when it clicks into position there not a problem. Now if you need to adjust uh, the bracelet or the clasp there are only two adjustment points on the clasp so you'll need to remove whatever links uh, you need from the bracelet uh, in order to get a nice comfortable fit. And I actually think um, a, a few less points here uh, remove some of the weakness in the clasp so I don't think it's entirely a bad thing that there's not a massive uh, amount of adjustment. Uh, there is no uh, divers extension um, or anything like that but uh, it's not a diving watch, so you shouldn't kind of really uh, expect that. Now, last but not least uh, with this watch, which I think really ticks the box, is uh, the movement itself. Now, in quite a lot of the, the Hamilton khaki watches, they use a lot of the ETA uh, 28 series uh, movements. So you've got the 2824, 2836, and uh, this one, which is a 2834-2. Uh, but this is the more up-to-date version. I think in the earlier model they used the 2834-2 from ETA and uh, this is still a 2834 but this is a Powermatic uh, version and uh, the original 2834 would have had a reserve I think of about 37 or 43 hours. Uh, this model 
uh, now with the Powermatic movement has a reserve of up to 80 hours, uh, which is a huge improvement. So 80 hour reserve, so you could put this watch down for a couple of days, come back to it and it will still be ticking away. So that's a big tick uh, in my box. Um, and I'm, it also has manual winding. So I mean, you can wind it up manually if you need to, but you'll know that if you've been wearing this for a week and you put it down, come back to it a couple of days later and it will still be running. And um, you can just whack it on your wrist and away you go. So that's, uh, that's really good. So like I say, it is manual winding and it's hard to do, but I pulled the crown out. It's not a screw down crown, it's just a standard waterproof crown, but you can pull the crown out and um, you can set the time. It does have a hacking seconds. Pop the crown back in and the watch carries on. So with the Powermatic 80, I'm gonna put up some still photos uh, with this video so you can get a better look at the movement because I'm just gonna, well, I don't think you're really gonna see it here in the video. So I'll try and get some still uh, pictures while I'm talking about the movement. So with the Powermatic uh, series of movements, what they've actually done is they've increased the length of uh, the mainspring itself within the movement. They've made some modifications to the mainspring so that it's able to produce um, a longer reserve on the watch. And they've also changed uh, how the balance works or the balance parts of, of the watch. So this watch model now has what's called a free sprung balance which means there are no regulation parts on the balance cock. So there's no regulator to adjust uh, the rate and there's no stud carrier to adjust any beat error. The balance is more uh, precisely made and the spring is precisely made to the exact, um, how to say this, the exact technical information of the watch. So they've, they've balanced everything almost perfectly so that the balance does not need any regulation. The power from the mainspring going through the gear train and passing that transmission of power through to the balance means that it can provide a more accurate and longer lasting time, uh, longer lasting timekeeping um, without any issues. So there's less things interfering with it. So it's a free, spung, uh, free sprung balance. And I'll try and add some photos so that you can see what that looks like. Um, if you're familiar with the, the ETA movements, you'll know what the original movements would look like. So this balance does actually look uh, a bit different. It looks like a completely naked balance cock. Uh, so you have a, a modified mainspring and a free balance. And what that allows the watch to do is it allows to uh, not only keep a higher reserve, but it also helps with the accuracy because the mainspring stays under tension for longer. Uh, this really helps uh, keep the accuracy up. So when this watch is fully wound or even at 50% the accuracy As far as I have found it is within plus or minus three or four seconds a day Which is really really good for a watch within this price range. It's not a certified chronometer. It hasn't gone through COSC uh, Certification, but it keeps really really good uh, time um, For a watch within this price range so yeah the movement on this is a great upgrade compared to the original ETA movements. And um, in terms of maintenance, it, getting it serviced, it's not gonna add any additional cost to what it would normally cost to service a, uh, an ETA 2800 series of movement. Um, it's just been modified slightly uh, to give you uh, the, uh, the improvements that you need to see. So uh, this watch uh, retailed uh, for £425 here in the UK. If you're looking on the used market, you'll probably find a used one um, for slightly less. But if you shop around, you can certainly get a good deal uh, on these watches. And uh, within this price range, I think this watch really hits um, quite a lot of the boxes. You've got a sapphire glass, you've got stainless steel casing, stainless steel bracelet if you go with the bracelet variant. Um, you have manual winding and automatic winding with hacking seconds. You have the day date. Um, you have a look of a watch that can be used in both um, a daily wear beta kind of sense. And also it's dressy enough that you could wear out to special occasions. And uh, the movement's really good quality. The clasp is a nice machine quality clasp. And overall, it's just a really, really good watch. So. For the money, I think this is probably one of the best watches you can have in your collection. It's not too dressy, and it's not too much of a tool watch. It's kind of right bang there in the middle, 
uh, of any watch that you can get uh, in terms of uh, pricing. The only other downside of the watch, um, which I'm pretty sure is familiar to most of you uh, who've ever owned a car key uh, before, is the loom on, on this watch is not great. Um, so nighttime legibility, if, if you've gone to bed and you're like two or three o'clock in the morning, the loom isn't gonna be very bright. It's still gonna be fairly legible because you've got a black dial with white numbers and uh, the white in the hands. But in terms of loom, it's not gonna compare to anything like a, a Citizen or a Seiko uh, with the super lumen over things like that but there's enough there in reasonable low light that you're going to be able to read the dial but in terms of nighttime visibility the loom isn't that great um, so yeah the bad points I would say uh, the sapphire glass is non AR coated so you're going to pick up reflections from absolutely everywhere the loom isn't terribly uh, great uh, the water resistance is five bar uh, uh, which is 50 meters, which is pretty sufficient for most people. If you need something much more waterproof, then certainly look at something like a, a G-Shock or, or a dive watch. Uh, but for the category that this watch falls in, I think five bar is certainly, uh, is certainly ample. So you've got water resistance, stainless steel case and bracelet, sapphire glass, automatic and manual winding movement with hacking seconds, the day, uh, the date, a very modern, um, improved uh, movement and a very nice clasp all of these features um, for what is what I would consider to be a very good price so if you are looking for a watch uh, between 350 and 450 pounds uh, then this is certainly a model uh, to take a look at I'm by no means endorsed by Hamilton or any other watch brand uh, so they're not paying me to write this or do this review this is a review of I'm doing off my own back so if you like this watch uh, then yeah, certainly take a look at um, at their website and see for yourself. And if this isn't the model for you, they do do other models uh, that you can take a look at. I do plan to do some other watch reviews uh, in the near future. I'm by no means a professional when it comes to watch reviews, uh, but I just like to give my thoughts on, uh, on certain watches that I buy so that you guys out there can make a more informed uh, decision with what you choose to buy. So if you like the video, give it a like. If you dislike the video, give it a dislike. And if you want to leave a comment, uh, leave a comment in the, uh, the box below. I'll try and leave all the information uh, in the description box uh, underneath this video for you. And uh, if you do like this channel, check out my other videos. And I hope to do some reviews on some other watches and some quite interesting British watch um, in the near future. So until then, take care and uh, have fun.